Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to look at LMC. So LMC stands for Littleman Computer and today we're going to look at the INP and the OUT commands in LMC. So LMC itself is an imaginary computer with a really small instruction set. So we spoke about, if you've looked at my other videos, the theory videos on the CPU, etc. We spoke about instruction sets, we've spoken about the fetch decode execute cycle, all those kinds of things. So if you haven't already looked at those, I would watch those first and then come back to this one. How I normally would do is at least do the first three videos with my first three lessons before I start LMC. So as I said, it's a fake computer, it doesn't really exist, so it's sort of a little bit like a semi-language in that some of the uh, mnemonics are quite similar, but it's not really the same thing you don't program in LMC. So as you can see on screen though, we've got some codes for add, subtract, start and load, and they are called add, sub, sta and lda. So those are some of the instructions that you're going to learn about in these videos. So for the exam, you need to know all of these on screen. So you can see you've got the mnemonic on the left, it says what it does in the middle, and on the right, it says alternative ones you can get away with using. Um, yeah, I won't be learning those, but if you accidentally forgot what store, uh, that store was STA, and you thought, oh, well, I'll just try STA, you would get a mark for that. So you've got add, sub, store, load, uh, branch, always, branch if positive, uh, branch if zero, input, output, end program, and data location. And we're going to go through two of these at a time in each of these videos. So here, we've got the Peter Higginson LMC Sort of simulate if you want to call it, we've got a code window, an output tray, the CPU itself, mailboxes, and your accumulator. So the top one is a program counter, it's a register, you should know that about this one already, which stores the address of the next instruction. In this case, it's going to be those 100 mailboxes we've got that you saw a second ago. Then we don't have things like the MDR, the MAR, the CIR, and all those bits. It's a much more simplified version. So uh, we just have the instruction register, so I think of that as a CIR if you like, and then we've got the address register, which is sort of like the memory address register. So, for example, uh, three could be store, that could be the um, the op code. So that would go in the instruction register because we're going to store the instruction. And if I'm loading slot one, the address register, the MAR is going to have zero one because that's where the data is that we're going to store. And the accumulator stores the sum that the last of the last calculation the computer's done. So mailboxes, it's, it's just RAM. This, these are all of our RAM slots, that's why it's got a little black background, looks a little bit like a chip. Um, and that's where all of your code's going to go, eventually when you load it in, and where all your data is going to be stored. So you've got a maximum of 100 things you can do on this particular um, simulation of LMC. Um, so if you write 101 lines, there's not going to be enough room because it won't fit. Um, but there's not much more to talk about, except for if you understand how RAM works, you should know that the instructions for the program and the data that the instruction uses, so the data for the program as well as the actual program itself, are all going to get stored in these mailboxes in this RAM, um, just like RAM does. So our first command, no surprises, INP stands for input, just like in Python. However, once you've input something and you've pressed enter, it will store it in the accumulator. So that's one of our registers and it'll stay there until you do some calculations on it or you input another number, in which case it will overwrite it. And now our out command, exactly the same thing, like print, but whatever's in the accumulator is gonna get put into the output tray. Again, if you input another number or if you add something to it or store a number, sorry, load another number in, it will get rid of whatever's in the accumulator. So it's really important that if you wanna get the data, you need to output it at an appropriate time. And that is pretty much it. So I've got an example program on the screen now where I input a number, which is number 10, I output it and I stop the program using HLT. So you can see we've got these two little um, circles that run around. These are sort of the idea of our buses. So you'll see I store in 10, that's the blue one, which is the data bus, and the red one is acting as the address bus. It's not 100% accurate, but you can get a good idea of the address bus going to the instruction in RAM and the data bus taking it back to um, the control unit and things like that. So as you can see, I inputted 10 and the result was 10. And that is literally it. Quite a quick video, still trying to keep them nice and short. If you've looked at my five minute series, you'll see I try and keep them as quick as possible. But that is input and output and halt, I guess, in LMC for H446, A-Level Computer Science. And I will see you in the next video.